Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kevin Trainer, and I'll be your moderator today for the 2024 SEC Football Championship Game Press Conference. Uh, again, a reminder of the media, you can use the raise hand function for questions for today's press conference. We're now joined by the head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs, Kirby Smart. Georgia was 10-2 and two and has uh, advanced to the SEC Championship Game. Coach Smart, we'll begin with an opening statement, and then we'll take questions. Coach? Yeah, uh, before I begin, I'd like to take a, a moment in, on behalf of all of uh, Dog Nation and all the Georgia uh, Athletic Department and send our condolences to the family and friends of uh, Bob Holt of, uh, of Arkansas uh, Democrat Gazette. I know he uh, embodied uh, what this conference um, is all about. Uh, he was a great man. I, one, of the, one of my favorites every time we went to SEC Media Days, uh, always had great uh, uh, questions and great candor and um, just a, a part of this conference that I think is really special. So uh, our condolences go out to he, his family and uh, the Arkansas community. Um, with that, I'll, I'll open with uh, what a great opportunity in front of us. Um, I've always made mention many, many times and sound like a broken record, but this is the, the greatest championship game of them all in terms of conferences. Uh, it means a lot to a lot of people. Um, Atlanta has been the, the really hotbed home of uh, this game for a long time. I still remember my uh, senior year in high school playing in the playoffs and uh, it was a Saturday night game and uh, in Birmingham, Alabama, Alabama was playing Florida in one of the greatest uh, SEC championship games of all time. And I remember listening to the radio and hearing the outcome of that game as I was getting ready to play uh, in our game. Um, so it's been a long time because I'm old now. And uh, it's, it's a great uh, a game. And it's one that I've played in a lot of times and had a lot of heart, heartbreak and a, a lot of triumph. Uh, but that's what makes this conference special is this game is, is tough. And uh, the, the atmosphere, the electricity around the game is really awesome. So we're looking forward to it. Um, honored to be playing Coach Sark and his team at Texas. What a tremendous job he's done there. Getting them into this game is a gauntlet. And uh, it's a reward to play in it, and both teams have earned that. Thank you, Coach Smart. If you have a question, use the raise hand function. We'll start with Kirk Bowles of the Houston Chronicle. Morning, Kirby. Morning, Kirk. Uh, as far as Texas, when you see them now, as compared to when you played them in October, it seemed like they're obviously doing better with the run. And I wondered if you see it as a change in philosophy a little bit on Sark's behalf or just better running by Wisner and better blocking by the line? Well, it's both. I think there's a commitment to it. You know, when you have 30 and 40 carries in multiple games, um, there is a great commitment to the run. They're extremely uh, physical. They've got really good backs. Um, their offensive line is massive, you know, and uh, the quarterback does a great job uh, putting them in the right runs. They attach – uh, RPO pass game to those runs. They change tempos on you. I mean, it's traditional uh, Sark football. He, he formations you. He takes shots on you. Uh, don't lull to sleep and think that he's just going to run the ball because they have uh, every protection and uh, every uh, uh, pattern, uh, every use of personnel available. Uh, they're really good at what they do. And I, I do think that he is, you know, he's played in some tough conditions, whether it's really cold on the road, playing somewhere. He, he knows how to win in the SEC. You don't win in the SEC with a beauty contest, and he's won with really good defense. So I think it's been, uh, you know, one of his best coaching jobs in terms of the way he's won, the style of games he's won. Next, we will go to Chip Towers of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Okay, just had to unmute there. Uh, Coach, uh, yeah, you know, we all knew when it was announced a couple of years ago, Texas and Oklahoma were coming. They were joining the league. Here's Texas' first year in this game. Uh, surprised, uh, uh, not surprised, and and just can you put some perspective on, on, on what that means? You know, that's a big-time program and a big-time fan base, and I imagine they're going to be in Atlanta big time. Yeah, you're asking if I'm surprised by them being in the game? Yeah, essentially, but uh, your thoughts on it, not necessarily whether you're surprised or not, but, you know, just just that accomplishment. I mean, the first year they got in. Yeah, they earned it. I mean, they they, they played an SEC schedule. Uh, they won the most games of any SEC team this year. 
Um, they have a tremendous, they have a tremendous program. They're built that way. They're built to do that. They've got a tremendous uh, amount of talent and they've done a great job, uh, building to that, that, that recruiting to that really that, that fan base or that, that team. And they've done a great job of that. Next we'll go with Jordan Hill of dogs two, four, seven. Go ahead, Jordan. Yeah. Kirby, what have Trevor and Christian Miller been able to do to this point in the week? Uh, they've been taking part in some parts of practice and um, uh, taking reps and, you know, hopeful that those guys are, are able to do something. You know, they're both listed as questionable right now. Our next question will come from Anthony Dasher of UGA Sports. Hey, Coach. Uh, I know you talked about uh, Smile Munden yesterday. Now, I know he didn't play in that first game. Uh but the impact he could possibly make in this, and when he's health, when when he's healthy like he is, uh, how, what what different? How different does he make your defense? Well, he, he provides depth. You know, that's not a position that I think you can go out and play every snap. An inside linebacker, it's a it's a conditioning position where you have to rotate and play guys. And uh, he's given us flexibility uh, to play multiple packages. Um, his coming back has made us a little deeper and not have to play as many snaps with the other guys. Um, he's allowed Jalen to do more things and take a little bit of the inside backer off of Jalen. Um, so that's that. Those are all key uh, components to the success of our our defense. He get, he get, he gives us a lot of experience in third down. He gives us a lot of experience in being multiple because he matches up well uh, with guys, uh, whether it's out of the backfield or tight ends. So uh, we're, we're thankful to have him back. Wish we'd had him the whole time. Again, if you'd like to ask a question, use the raise hand function. Our next question will come from Thomas Jones. Thomas. Coach, good afternoon. Um, in that first game, I believe Carson tossed three picks. He's been real careful with the ball the last month or so. Uh, what does Texas do particularly well on pass defense and pass defense? And how's Carson better equipped right now to handle it? Uh, Texas does a tremendous job. First of all, they have really good players. They have very sound schemes. They, uh, they out execute you. Um, they figure out your tendencies and, uh, they do a great job of recognizing formation routes. Um, they have instinctive defensive football players, especially on the second level, um, where they route, they read routes, they jump routes, they, uh, they do it. They do a tremendous job. So that has a lot to do. They get hands on balls. They get a lot of tips. And uh, when you get tips, you tend to get a lot of interceptions. They they are one of the best in the country at doing that. Next question will come from Connor Riley of Dog Nation. Yeah, Kirby, uh, Carson and Tate, they came in together. They're often seen talking on the sidelines. They've talked about how they're friends and they help each other. How have you seen the two of them grow together and, and mature and em emerge as leaders for this team? Um, I think Tate's had, you know, a different path. He obviously was playing early in his career. His path has been uh, marked by uh, some tough injuries and overcoming those injuries and battling back. And he embodies that offensive line toughness mentality. Um, Carson took a different path. He didn't play as early as Tate did, but he did uh, uh, fight for what he got. He fought for his position and uh, he grew while he was waiting. He worked while he was waiting, which we say around here, will you work while you wait? He did that. Um, and he grew and got better. And uh, the, the two of them have been close for quite some time. And I think anytime you have a, a, a veteran offensive line and a veteran quarterback, those two groups will always bond because they, uh, they protect each other. Our next question will come from Steve Moulton of WZZN. Hey, Coach. Always appreciate the time. I, I wanted to ask the uh, the early returns of the early signing period moving up to yesterday. What what are your thoughts on National Signing Day being yesterday, Coach? Um, it's it's not really a good time to. I mean, there's no good time to have it. So it's you know, do you wait longer into December where we were, and you're dealing with uh, not knowing your roster? The the point in moving it up was to solidify your signing class and be sure of that and then focus on uh, your own roster. Um, so it may be the, the lesser of two evils. I'm not sure. It was tremendously uh, tough, I'm sure, with Sark and Texas as well. You got a lot going on and um, you're trying to manage uh, a tough situation uh, in terms of prep for a game um, and uh, a signing class. So, uh, you know, others 
weren't in the game, they probably like it better because they're not dealing with uh, issues that will be coming up next week. Again, if media, you have a question, we use the raise hand function in Zoom, and then we will call on you. Uh, our next question will come from David Rumsey of Front Office Sports. Coach, in your mind, does this year's title game have the same meaning and value as it has in years past, given that both teams appear to be playoff bound in some form, no matter Saturday's result? Well, I, I certainly think so, because I'm a SEC enthusiast that believes in uh, an SEC title is a significant marker to your season and the kind of season you had. It also uh, gets you a, a buy and it gets you uh, an opportunity to rest and recover while others play uh, formidable opponents and tough opponents and removes you from that. So you're, you're playing for an opportunity to, uh, to rest possibly. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We're using the raise hand function and we will unmute your line to ask the question. We have another question from Steve Moulton from WZZN. Go ahead, Steve. Coach, I was wondering analytically, uh, how much uh, with analytics really uh, taking a hold of this game, I wonder what it does to you in particular, just strategy wise on when to go for it on fourth down or three, uh, you just strategy wise, how much has analytics maybe molded your mind a little different in how you think about, you know, formulating a game plan coach? Well, analytics don't change your game plan. I think that's a, a maybe a mistake in, in in the way we're we're saying it. It does not game plan is something you do before the game, right? So uh, uh, analytics is something you're deciding uh, in the flow of a game, and it's changing by the second remaining time situation. Uh, what's going on? It, it's taking all that stuff into account. So um, it's it's changed over time. Um, I'm not a, a person that believes. Uh, Every single time you go with the analytics, I know we, we talked about that with uh, the Georgia Tech situation. Um, I like knowing what the analytics say, and I like making decisions uh, based on the flow of a game. So um, it's good to have the knowledge. It's good to know it. But ultimately, you have to make the decision in game how you feel. Next, go to Kirk Bowles of the Houston Chronicle. Kirk. Hey, Kirby. Uh, obviously, Arch Manning played a couple of series against y'all. And Austin didn't do too much. They had one nice 21 yard run, but they used him differently against AM, part of their run scheme. I was curious how much stress you think that puts on a defense and uh, how much time you got to worry about new wrinkles from that. Yeah, I mean, first of all, there's not enough time in the week to worry about the stress that, that Texas's and, and Sark's offense puts on you. So, like, you can't cover it all. There's no we, – we could have two weeks. We still will feel like, well, what if they do this? What if they do that? There's too much offense uh, that they can select from uh, to try to chase Ghost. you got to do things on principle. That's no different uh, than Arch. I mean, we, we've practiced knowing that Arch could be in there. Um, we've had to defend quarterback runs uh, a lot this year. Look, Arch is not just a quarterback run guy. He's a really good athlete that can take off and, and run at any time, which is the toughest kind to defend. I'd much rather have a guy that only runs uh, than a guy that does both, and he certainly can do both. Uh, he opens up the playbook for them in terms of the plays he can do with his feet, but Quinn does a great job too. So, uh, you know, we have to be prepared for both guys. Um, it would not shock me at all to see uh, both those guys play and in, uh, uh, in Arch be able to play because he has a different uh, element that he brings to the game as well. Thank you. Next question comes from Dan Wilkin of the USA Today. Kirby, with the direction things are going with playoff expansion and the focus on the playoff plus the December portal window, do you think the bowl season is going to continue to be viable? as it is not sure the reference of the question are you you taking the uh playoff bowl games out of it or yeah the teams that the teams that don't make the playoff yeah you know that's a tough question because i'm a big believer in development of your roster i mean if you want to make the assumption that 40 percent 30 percent of your roster is going to turn over and people are going to leave um then it's going to be hard to continue having bowls. But I'm still of the belief that, that kids want a reward for their season, still get an opportunity to play an opponent. Yeah, it may look a little different. It may be younger players, uh, and it may be a forecast to the next season. But I think that's a reward 
for uh, young players who maybe didn't get to play as much during the year uh, or the guys that, that want to maybe injured. We've had guys that were injured and didn't get to play and they want to play uh, in that last opportunity to play for their university. So I still think it matters and is important. I certainly don't minimize the fact that the turnover rate has increased. And with an increased turnover rate, you could make a case that uh, it makes those games either less significant to some uh, or it makes those games harder to uh, manage and have. The next question will come from uh, Weiser from the Athens Banner Herald. Go ahead, Mark. Kirby, I don't, I don't think uh, Jonel Aguero played against Georgia Tech. Is he still dealing with a finger injury or what went into that? And how have other guys kind of done at that position? Yeah, since the Ole Miss game, he's had to have a, a surgery and a pin put in, and uh, he's been trying to practice and play with a club. Uh, it's been tremendously tough for him um, to be able to do that. He's he's out of the club now and uh, in a much better uh, uh, position to be able to practice and play. I mean, he's, he's practiced each week and stayed with us, but it's just been tougher, uh, as you can imagine, playing with the use of really one hand. Um, and he's, he's, he's back now and able to do a lot more this week and um, – Hopeful that he can help us. And if you have a question, please use the raise hand function and we will call on you. We'll next go to Anthony Dasher, UGA Sports. Anthony. Hey, Coach. Getting back to the craziness of, of yesterday, I was just wondering, how did you kind of go about delegating responsibilities to make sure, I guess, you had all your bases covered from a, the team standpoint, recruiting standpoint, I mean, guys, you know, Maybe some, you know, were some some words you still had to kind of get some of those uh, kids you had signed. We're, we're going to sign. Uh, how difficult was that? I don't. Uh, I mean, my focus is on Texas. I'll be honest with you. I, I think um, it's hard to navigate, but we 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 try to recruit kids that, you know, that when they say they're coming, they're coming, and we've had a, a large sum of commitments for quite a while and it doesn't keep teams from reaching out to them and throwing things at them late. And uh, it's never different than it was. It's only higher priced and more money being thrown now, which is unfortunate, but fortunate. You know, it's, it, the, the kids think it's a fortunate to have an opportunity to make more, but it's unfortunate that it gets done the way it gets done in terms of people throwing uh, pieces of paper in front of them at the 11th and 12th hour um, while we're trying to prepare for a game. And I just kind of go on the relationships we built over time and assumed that people that, that told us they were coming, they're coming. And for the most part, we've had pretty loyal constituency when it comes to our commitments. So my day yesterday was as close to a normal uh, Wednesday as it could be. We did third down in red area, and we focused on that. Thanks. We have time for a few more. If you'd like to ask a question, please raise your hand. We'll now go to Graham Coffey. Graham. Hey, Kirby. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Will Muschamp has uh, been with you guys kind of during the weeks this season and uh, watching his son uh, on the weekend. Uh, I was wondering if he would rejoin you guys or uh, be in, in a different role on Saturday with uh, Vanderbilt season, however. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not even sure. He's with us right now. Um, he's with us uh, today. He stays uh, with us throughout the week, I think, until uh, usually on Thursdays. Um, but I, I can't even answer that question, to be honest, because most weeks he leaves uh, after Thursday. Gotcha. Thank you. Next question comes from Bob Ballou of CBS Austin. Go ahead, Bob. Hey, Kirby, uh, obviously you guys did a, a, a great job on the Texas offense in that first half uh, of, of the first game. I, I'm curious what what really impresses you about Quinn's response and what are some of the challenges that that he poses? What impresses me about Quinn? Say that question one more time. I'm not sure I understood it. Just what impresses you about Quinn, kind of his response in the second half after you know they benched him for Arch and he comes back in and then – just in general, what kind of impresses you about the the him and the challenges he poses? Well, he's experienced. I mean, I think the number one thing when you look at the the quarterbacks playing in the SEC championship, the two common denominators is I don't know that there's anybody across the league that had more experience than these two. And uh, I tell people all the time in the SEC, you, you don't know what it's like playing on the road till you do it. You don't know what it's like playing at night until you do it. These guys have been in some 
some some some tough fights uh, uh, across this league uh, in terms of you know Quinn playing in the playoffs last year, playing SEC opponents last year. Um, he's he's been around it, so I'm most impressed with his uh, toughness, his ability to stand in the pocket, to navigate the pocket. He's made plays with his legs, uh, and he he makes plays with his mind. Uh, as great quarterbacks do, they can change protections and they know where to go with the ball and stand in there. He's He's got tremendous experience, and uh, uh, he's also got tremendous arm talent. Coach, we'll take one final question from Steve Moulton of WZZN. Go ahead, Steve. Coach, I did want to ask you about from a rules standpoint for your, the, the rules committee. I, I'd wonder if there is, may, especially going through this season, whether or not there might be a thought moving forward on simplifying some rules, making things less complicated moving forward for the for the betterment of the game, Coach. In reference to what? I, I'm, there's plenty I can reference of just uh, I for immediately what comes off the top of my head is, say, uh, you muff a, a punt and you can't advance the ball because it's not a change in possession. Whereas if there's if you catch the punt, you can advance the ball. Uh, there's just certain you know intricacies of this game that feels like it needs to get simpler, at least from my point of view, Coach. Well, they've been doing it for a long time, okay? They, 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 these officials, and I sit on these rules committees. Steve Shaw is a bright man, and so are the people on this uh, the, the, this this group that I'm a part of for, for rules changes. And most of the time, it's health and safety. Um, you're talking about, I think, maybe the simplification of some things. There's usually a rhyme or reason why they have the rule. Um, so I don't know which specific ones uh, you're referencing, but they will look at them in each and every year uh, and try to make the best decisions for the game of football. Coach Smart, thank you for your time today. We look forward to seeing you on Saturday here in Atlanta. Thank you. Go Dogs.